Well, we had the bridge. I stopped here at the duty free to uh, to change my uh, tablet. So the Canadian Rogers tablet is uh, in storage, and we have Verizon. I logged out on that one, right? I logged in on this one. And I changed to a US rules. And I showed the uh, the border crossing. So I'm leaving uh, Sarnia, or actually this part is also known as uh, uh, Point Edward. Point Edward, Ontario. Port Huron, Michigan. And I actually did, didn't, I didn't plan on uh, recording again, but uh, I don't cross here often uh, when it's dark. And I like how the, the bridge has all these uh, Blue lights. And that guy is driving in the middle with no flashing lights, which you're supposed to have if you're if you're fast, if you meet the fast rules. That's it. So he's he was just passing me basically. Speed limit is. 50 kilometers an hour, 30 miles per hour. All right, let's see. Can we see those lights? Uh, yeah, actually, they look much better from the side. But yeah, I decided to go through US, right? Because it's uh, the weather is much better. And uh, fuel is much cheaper. And the roads are better because over here it's all freeways. And but on the way back, on the way back, of course, I will have to go through uh, Canada because that load is from Alberta Welcome to the United States of America. and destination is West for one kilometer. and destination is uh, Ontario so I cannot enter US unless I do something like a bond you know which will cost money so I don't want to do that actually this is perfect that we're stopping because I need to write down my mileage here real quick uh, I got a new uh, new little pad here for 2020 so Michigan 164 911 kilometers all right Was a guy behind me. What happened? Huh. He probably went by on this lane. In this lane. Did you guys see? I'm I'm imagining trucks behind me. That's why I put my light, my flashing lights on. And see, sometimes it takes two minutes. No one on the bridge. You come to the booth 
and especially like now, right, when I'm empty, the guy takes your passport, closes the window, and then opens it, opens it 10 seconds later and says, have a good day. <laughs> I'm serious, happened to me. Basically, uh, I think, did he say hi? Like he opens the window. No, they just say citizenship. Canada, hold on. Takes your passport, closes the window then. Okay, have a good day. So the guy is uh, busy or he's doing something. But then other times, you have situation like this, where his trucks are slowly crawling. On the bridge. Now there's somebody behind me, but I see he turned on his flashing lights as well. Look at this guy. It's real scary, you know, they fly by so close. And he's empty. I don't know, I used to, can you use the fast lane if you're empty? I thought you're gonna be loaded. So yeah, I didn't see any loads uh, out of Canada going west. Uh, everything was going in their own place. So I have to do like, uh, I saw a load in Nova Scotia. Like I mentioned, going to Portland, Oregon. Which is like basically a wrong origin, a wrong destination. And didn't see anything from the nearby US. Because I was also thinking maybe there's something like in Baltimore or Pittsburgh, you know. And now I'm talking to the customer and he says, well, you're going you're gonna to go through US, right? I said, yeah, because it's cheaper, faster. And he says, well, if you see something in Chicago, uh, I'm okay if you take it. Like, if you see a load in Chicago going to Alberta, he says, we're okay. Uh, because he's, uh, his main concern is, uh, like, March 1st. Basically, you know, the, the, all these frost laws, they can start in March. And so, but of course, it's only January now, so we have lots of time. But of course, I need to make money uh, because it would help to do another load on the way to Alberta. I just checked my chains. It's so nice, you know, to have these D-rings on the on the Jeep like that. Beautiful. Uh, makes total sense. So I used these four D rings, right? Everything was tight. Uh, and then the two on the top, we, we're gonna reserve those for offloading, you know, with a crane or something, with an excavator, right? And my clutch is fixed. My fuses are working. See, now I can, uh, I'm charging this. I used to charge it through the USB port. Like that was the only thing left here that still provided the charge, which was USB port. Uh, but it's of course much slower. Uh, and so now I just use, uh, I just use, uh, you know, like something like this, right? And I plug it in in there. So now it's much faster. Very happy. So yeah, it cost me uh, what? <laughs> ninety-five dollars Canadian uh, to fix two fuses. Yeah, I know people are gonna leave some bad comments. Come on, Sergey, you can do that yourself. No need to pay to these greedy mothers, uh, you know. Um. But who knew, right? I had no idea that they would charge me this much, you know? I thought it would be, I don't know, 
maybe so it was what like dollar fifty for both fuses or dollar thirty uh, I don't know but I know the minimum of course is like half an hour right and if it's actually 150 bucks an hour Canadian so you know that's seventy five dollars But it's just ridiculous, you know? Like, if this was me, like, honestly, if this was my shop, yeah, I would never treat a customer like that where the customer is bringing a truck with a faulty clutch. And then he says, hey, by the way, uh, I got a couple of fuses. Um, I got a couple of fuses. broken you see they just opened uh, they just opened a new lane so you always gotta watch these uh, signs over there because right away they opened this before it was only fast I think because you see over there there's only three lanes and over here they just opened this one okay all right we're gonna finish here so I'm gonna spend the night in Michigan and then keep trucking tomorrow through Chicago, Wisconsin, Black River Falls, towards uh, Portal, North Dakota. And then I enter Canada into Saskatchewan and keep going towards Calgary. Thanks for watching.